started with the NLP uh, and the that famous paper, the attention all you need. Um, so now it took a um, few years to use a transformer in computer vision because it was used um, for the for the NLP, the text language. So this was the first paper, 2020, uh, which is uh, called the, uh, an image is worth 16 by 16 words. Okay, and this is, has been called VIT, um, <clears throat> vision. So, and it's very important, uh, you know, paper and has a lot of citations. Uh, so far, it was published last year, I mean, 2021. So, um, the as we discuss about the attention, that example I gave you, uh, simple image three by three, if you do the attention on each pixel, you know, and if the image is say 256 by 256, there'll be a lot of computation. So we cannot do attention at the pixel level. And um, so therefore this paper, they propose that let's divide an image in 16 by 16 pages, then each page can become token and then we can do the tokens attention. So token is like 16 by 16 pages, like a token, like a word in the NLP, okay? Um, so other thing is important that the transformer has to be trained on large data set because they have a lot of parameters. And um, so this paper, they actually collected this data set called GFT 3 images and uh, trained this on that data set. And they got pretty good results, you know, on ImageNet, uh, ImageNet Real and C400 and all this thing, uh, VTAP and so on. These are for classification? Yeah. So um, so now if you go in a little bit detail, the um, vision transformer, what we have is, I don't know why this image appeared here. Um, we have an uh, image like this. We get the pages and the pages 16 by 16 and go through, actually, let me remove this thing. I don't know why this uh, thing is here. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so um, so we have these patches, and these are like tokens, and we do the linear projection, the, the dimension of the page, whatever we want. Um, and then this is the position coding, as I talk about, and the transformer encoder. So in this case, we want to use for image classification, then we have this MLP head, okay? And then we get you what class this particular image is. So this was a VIT vision transformer, okay? So as you remember, a transformer architecture like this, that we get the embedded pages, we do the normalization, then we have multi-head attention, then we do the skip connection, again, normalize MLP and so on. We have lots of blocks like this. <clears throat> so um, now, if you take an image like this, say 224 by 224, divide this in pages, each 16 by 16 page, we'll have 14 by 14 pages, okay? So then we get all these pages and uh, we will have 196 pages, uh, 196 tokens, and each page is uh, RGB. So 16 by 16 is 256, and then multiply by three, that will be the dimension of that uh, uh, token feature vector. So um, now we will have this uh, 760 dimensional vector for each of the page. And um, total we have 196 of these tokens because 14 by 14 is 196. So this is uh, first token, second token and so on each is of 768 dimension. So then we will add a special token called CLS token, which is shown on the top. So now 
we will have 197 tokens, okay? So um, therefore, the complete VIT will be 224 by 224. You divide this at 16 by 16, and uh, you get 768 dimensional embedding for each token, and then you add the position encoding shown here, and that goes to the transformer encoder, and then we get the output of the <clears throat> different classes we want to. So they propose these three different models. Uh, we have the VIT base, VIT large, and VIT huge. They have different layers. Um, and um, then the original, the base model was 768. And um, then you can do higher dimension, 1024, 1280, depending on, you know, whatever you want. Of course, the performance will be different. And this will be the size of the each model, okay? Uh, size of MLP and size of how many heads you have in each layer. And these are parameters. So maximum is 632 uh, million parameters in the huge and minimum 86 million parameters in the base. So for the for the questions, I think uh, for the virtual people, it will be better if you just hold down your question. Uh, let me finish this, then then I'll give you a chance to ask because it's very difficult to coordinate that. Okay. So um, so these were the results, you know, for the ImageNet, uh, different data sets, CFAR, and so on. And this was uh, trained on their GFT data set and they compare with the standard CNN ResNet and so on. So it was the first paper and, you know, uh, which shows that transformer can be used for the computer vision also. And it really made a big difference. And these days, most of the time we are using transformer. So, which is uh, important. Okay, so now you can find the attention as we talk about the main thing in transformers self attention. Okay, so um, which means that each token get a support from all other tokens, uh, captures the context, and we uh, have enriched features after the transformer and uh, as compared to just raw features. So now we can find out attention of each token giving each token and find the cosine similarity with the CLS token. And these are the attention for this, these are images that when the classifier decided that this image of uh, say dog, then these were the uh, tokens which were used uh, for, the, for the decision that they have more importance, okay? Uh, similar to the CLS token. So, um, so that's the vision transformer. And uh, then after that, uh, there was uh, another paper called Swain Transformer, and uh, which actually uh, got a more prize. So in computer vision, the most prestigious prize you can get is called Mar Prize, who was a uh, you know, very famous researcher from MIT. He was a British researcher, uh, neurophysiologist. He came to MIT started how to solve the computer vision problem, kind of inspiration from human vision. Um, so he did a very pioneer work, lots of uh, PhD students he supervised, and he has a very famous book called Vision, which is very uh, scientific uh, American level um, book, which you can read lots of interesting thoughts, how to solve the vision problem, uh, getting inspiration from human vision and so on. So, so the the every two years, ICC we held it every two years. ICC means International Conference of Computer Vision. The last time was held in Paris. Uh, we were there. We had uh, lots of papers there. So, um, so this paper uh, is award is given among all the papers submitted. And it's big review process and so on. And this paper got the more prize. Okay. So um, now. The, the transformer most big problem is the complexity, right? The self-attention, you need so many 
each token has to be correlated with all other tokens. Tokens you have, a lot of computation. Image has a lot of you know tokens, a big size of image, and if it's a video, even more. So it's a problem. So um, and you know, there's a difference between the language and vision domain. Um, so because in vision, there's a lot of variation of scale. Same object picture can look different if you zoom in, zoom out, uh, orientation, rotation, so on. And um, of course, the higher resolution images require a lot of tokens. Um, so they came up with this uh, <clears throat> Swin transformer idea to address this concern that you can apply, you know, transformer, you know, to images and with reasonable computation and so on. Um, so the idea was that it's like a hierarchical transformer and it apply this notion called shifted windows. And I'm going to explain that. Um, and the main thing is instead of looking at the global context of the whole image, like given a token, you find a self attention with all other tokens, they will find the attention, the small window. And they found out that it still is okay as compared to old global attention. Okay. So um, the, but not just small window, but they have a shifted window and that actually is interesting. Okay. So, so this is the standard VIT as I explained. So you have in each of the layers, is the size of the, you know, token is 16 by 16 a page. But in Swain, what they did, they started 14, four by four, then eight by eight and 16 by 16. So this is a hierarchical way they keep increasing the size of the token, the, um, the where you can do the attention. So, and they got very good results. You know, they, they got on ImageNet and uh, not only in classification because VIT, only have results on the image classification. But these guys, they were able to do on object detection, the semantic segmentation, uh, and uh, <clears throat> performance actually surpassed uh, previous state of art method. Um, on the COCO, on the AD20K, and so on. So the architecture is uh, pretty simple. Um, so we start with an image the height and width three channels and we get the pages as we as we do in bit <clears throat> so but each page now is four by four okay and uh, so <clears throat> four by four is 16 three channels 48 so that's why this is 48 dimensional vector okay mm -hmm. so then um, we have these stages so first stage we will take this page embedding into linear embedding, page partitioning linear embedding, and we will have the Swin transform block. And we'll have two copies of that. And I, I will explain what the Swin transform block is. And then out of that, we will uh, have the, again, uh, four by four page, but we will chain the channels, the dimension of this embedding and they use different embedding, 96, 128, 192. Instead of 48, now we will have you know, these kind of branches. So then we'll have stage two, similar idea. Again, the page merging, then trans twin, twin transformer block. And here we will now increase, we will have eight by eight. And then this the, the size of this will be 2C as compared to C, because now we have bigger window. And then we'll have state three. Again, we have six blocks like that. And um, here we will have now 16 by 16, OK? Uh, and four times C here. So just because we do it twice, we, we have to do twice there also. Uh, so the stage four uh, will be similar, and there will be 32 by 32, and we'll have 8C. 
So this is the basically transformer block. So what you do is you take the uh, embedding from the previous layer, suppose L minus one layer, go to normalization, uh, <clears throat> then this will be window multi head self attention. So this W, it is, you know, window self attention. We are doing self attention in small window, not the whole image. So then the same thing, we do the sieve connection, we add this, then again, this uh, layer normalization, MLP. So this is one, then output of this goes here. Now again, normalization, now here is shifted window. We're gonna shift the window and then same thing, LN, MLP and so on. So each of the block is like this. So now if you look at uh, again detail, so this is four by four, you know, the first block and then shifted is like this one, shift half. Now four by four will be this one. So it's like, uh, like this one, okay? So that's the shifted window swing. Um, so now if you look at the actual equations, become more clear so we take the the z the embedding from the last layer l minus one ln layer normalization window uh, multi-head self attention then skip connection we add this and this is uh, to here then we take this uh, <clears throat> z head l and again layer normalization you know, normalization, then MLP. So after MLP, we get a CL here. Now this goes to the next block, which is uh, uh, again the LN, then the shifted window, multi-head self-attention. So this you want to keep in mind here is just window self-attention is shifted window SW, and then ZL then goes back LN, then MLP and so on. So that's the way the swain works. It's pretty you know, intuitive, simple thing, the way it works, okay? So um, that's it. So we have swain tiny, where it's a 96 dimension, uh, and we have, these are the layers in each of this block, two, two, six, six, two, six, two, and small, and the base, and the, large and these are the results so they do <clears throat> number of parameters for each of these they compare uh, <clears throat> in the top one image and accuracy so they are uh, doing better than other as you see here vit that so it does better than vit and uh, resonate and so on. This is um, on the um, another image net 22K, same phenomena. Um, this is on the um, object detection, um, mask or CNN and so on. Uh, and this is um, on the uh, ADE 20K, again, object detection, segmentation. Um, so summary, VIT was the first uh, vision transformer, but it was trained on the huge data set of 300 million. Uh, Swain implies the video uh, window attention and performs well on other tasks because they show object detection, kinematic segmentation, and so on. Yeah. Okay, so um, this paper, there's a lot of citations and uh, this presentation in the class was made by these students and this is a link for YouTube, you want to you know, watch that. Um, and also this reminds me, we are going to do, we will have a consent form, everybody has to sign because we are going to put these videos on the YouTube. So a simple form we will, you, you can get uh, that form from um, Naveed, you know, he knows. So I'll send it and everybody has to send it back. 
Okay, so it's CLIP is called Contrastive Language Image Free Training. That's what CLIP stands for. Um, and um, so it's a mechanism for uh, natural language supervision. So this is where image and text are kind of related and NLP and computer vision. And so we will pair an image with its caption using contrastive learning, okay? So it actually beats fully supervised um, based learning on many data set, which was very impressive. So, and can be used for zero shot classifier. So zero shot means you actually don't need training. You don't need any examples. You can just use it, the clip. The basic idea is very simple. Uh, so you have anchor and you have a positive example and you have negative examples. So you want to learn the representation of this anchor such that anchor representation, positive example of anchor, which is very similar, suppose a dog and this dog should be very close as compared to negative example, suppose airplane compared to dog should be very different. So that's the basic idea, okay? So let's look at this one. So you have input image and the text description is dog lying in the grass, okay? So we want to come up with a representation of image, which we'll call HI. And we want to come up with a representation of text, which we'll call HT. And we want to look at the similarity of that. Again, the cosine similarity. So we find that dot product, normalize it. So we're going to maximize that because this is image and this corresponding text, we're going to maximize, okay? So now we have another image like this. And this is the caption, and it's wrong. It's a negative. It's not a dog. It's an airplane. So therefore, we take the image representation, text representation, and we want to minimize that, okay? Because we want to push them back, okay? So that's the idea. So we will have lots of examples of image and text pair. We will take the text encoder, and suppose we have n, pairs. So this is the text encoding of the first text. This is the second one, third one, and so on. And similarly, we will get the image in embedding or encoding. It's the first image, second image, and so on. Then we will look at the cosine similarity. Okay. So this is, a, this is the similarity of first image with the first text caption. This is the similarity of first image with the second text capital and so on, okay? So as you know that while this is the right caption of this image and this is the right caption of second image and so on, so this these should be the maximized and the rest of should be minimized. That's the idea, okay? So um, the what we are gonna do now is, um, we will use these representations, notation, um, MI will be one heart encoded label vector i at image. So if you have N images, we'll have N dimensional vector. So only one of the element, if it's a third image, third element one, rest of them zero. That's called one heart encoding. That we will call the MI, okay? So that's this one. Then, we are going to look at the cosine similarity of that image with the all other with, with the all all of these texts. So we have text embedding of first, second, third, fourth. So this will be the cosine similarity of this first image with rest of with all of these text captions, and we will represent this y i n. So that will be, because this will be a scalar. So we put all the scalar together to be vector, okay? So we will do the same thing. We will take the unhot encoding of the text, like this one, and it'll be again n dimensional vector. So that third element one, rest of them will be zero. 
and then we will find out cosine similarity of this with all these images, which is will be here, okay? For ith image for this particular third third caption, we like this, which we'll call yi. So then um, we are going to use cross entropy. So as you know, the cross entropy between two distributions, okay? And um, so we have the one heart encoding of the ith image, and we have the cosine similarity vector of the image with the text. So we will look at look at like this. So this is our <clears throat> image three cosine similarity of that with the text caption. So here for the third one, this will be I will be three and am I we will go through this uh, <clears throat> We will sum up these. This is will be the first one, which will be taking this one heart encoder, but find the cross entropy with this one. And this will we were going to do that for I1, I2, I3, and all these. And this is will be capturing the similarity where we are take we are comparing the images with the text. Okay, so we are going to do the same thing now, other way, where we are going to do the text and uh, text embedding, and then we are going to look at the cosine similarity of this particular text with all the images. And that will become like this. So as you see that in this one, in the first one, we were changing the, um, um, the MI was the, one had encoded of the ith image and y i m was cosine vector for ith image. So that's what we are using. Here we have the ti and we are patching with the cosine similarity vector of i text. So that's the both this way and this way. And we add it up and that will be the loss. And we want to minimize this loss so that we want to learn this representation. So it's what we have in a way done, we could have just maximized these and minimize these rest one. But since you guys have learned the cosine, the cross entropy, which is used a lot in image classification. So we can express this in the cross entropy fashion using two distribution. The one distribution is the one heart encoding, which is the only one of the element is one, rest of them zero, and other distribution is the cosine similarity of the, the image with the all possible text, this one. So this is one vector, this is another vector, which is one heart encoding. We want to uh, minimize this uh, cross entropy. And similarly, now we did images the text. Now we are going to do other way. We are going to do a text with images, which is this one. And we are going to do this for all the rows and all the columns. And that's what the summation is. Okay. This is for the I one to N. And this is also I one to N. So we'll capture all these with this way. And that's the way we're going to actually learn this representation. So now if you look at the supervised classification works, this is your CNN kind of thing. We take an image and we go through different layers. And at the end, we have this MLP. That's the way classification works. Now, the there is a difference between supervised classification and the zero shot learning. Supervised classification, we have to have labels because we um, have the image of a dog. At the end, we want that the, the network should predict it's a dog. So humans have to look, sit down, and label these images. These are dog, these are airplanes, these are bicycles, and so on. So that's called supervised learning, supervision by humans. 
But as you know, if there are a lot of data, many, many classes, it's a lot of time consuming. And there are actually companies which are making billions of dollars on labeling. Um, so now what would be good that if we can do this without labeling, without supervision, without you know human supervision. So that's where the zero shot uh, learning comes in. So spoils learning, we need the label data. In zero shot learning, we don't have to have labels, okay? Uh, training phase, we need to train the network. For spoils learning, we have to learn these. But in zero shot, we don't have to train. And I will show you example that we can use the clip um, image encoder just to classify it separately. So other thing is that, you know, in this one, final prediction is on label data, but, you know, uh, on the zero shot learning, it can be just, we want to find out accuracy. So um, now the reason we want to be able to do this uh, zero shot learning because you know we can be able to actually recognize the classes for which we have not trained. Suppose if you train a classifier on say 100 classes, now you have another image from other class that supervised classifier will not work because it will not say well, it will give you wrong result. It will try to force as one of the 100 classes. So Supervised classification a fixed number of labels, so it cannot be generalized. So uh, CLIP actually overcomes these limitations, and uh, that's what the zero shot learning is. So we will train on one data set, and actually we can generalize on unseen categories. So here's the idea. So suppose we have these classes like a horse, dogs, and boat, but zero shot learning will be able to classify as a donkey or jet ski um, because we are going to use that language. Of course, it will do well on these images which it belongs to, but we want to be able to do these out of domain uh, data classes. And that's, that's a very good thing about CLIP. So um, the way the Zero shot learning works. So what we do, um, suppose we have already trained the image classifier, image embedding, and the text embedding, those two embedding encoder I talk about. Now we want to apply this on some unknown data set, some new data set. So we will just test it using this. And the idea is that we will take the, suppose if the object is label is plain, we'll make a sentence after that. We'll say a photo of an object, photo of a plane, photo of a car, and so on. We put the sentence, we'll get text encoder. We'll get text embedding because we have learned that. Okay. So then we will take an image. Um, we want to classify, we'll get this embedding and we will match it with all the possible classes. And whichever give you maximum, that's a class, that's it. So that is a zero shot, you know, classification. We don't have to do anything. We just take the, take the new unknown data set. We make a sentence for each of the class, which the testing classes we have, we just uh, compare, which give you a best, yeah. But you told it that there's a label called donkey, although you didn't train on donkey, but you told it that there is a label called donkey. Yeah, so so his question is the label of donkey, we told it because that label we use is for testing, but we did not use that for training. So that's a that's a main difference. The testing, of course, you want to know because you want to evaluate. So we told it. Okay. Doctor explain that. Yeah. That yeah, we basically take lots of captioned images from the internet to train the encoder, right? How yes, do, yes. So, so I'm yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So how do we know it hasn't seen a class? Like we haven't analyzed mm -hmm. the images by a human. So how do we know it hasn't seen a caption? It has. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's a. So he's saying that this um, 
data set, we are going to talk about this, how we get data set. So um, there may be, um, it has already seen those, those classes or, you know, those text description, but we have not used the labeling, which is not supervised. We just got the internet, we get an image, we get a caption, and we are using that. So also there are some, some ways that they will filter out those classes if we know when they evaluate, you know, in the zero shot learning, they will filter out those classes, which the network may have seen it and evaluate only on other one. But that's a that's a good good point, and that's you know, uh, people are aware of that. Okay, so um, so let's look at the you know how to get the web data set. So they go to the website, uh, and um, so it's the uh, you know this data set of IFCC, hundred million, but did not have enough data you know enough natural language description. So they actually collected their own data set and they use this half a million queries and their data set, 400 million data set. And it's a private data set, it's still it's not available. But um, this, uh, after the clip paper, there's a whole effort. Now there's a largest data set is 5 billion or 10 billion. You know? There are lots of companies, lot of research groups have collected this text image and text pair. So it started the whole research idea. So um, that's what the data set is. So then again, just to repeat the clip architecture, input text, we do the encoding of text and we have transformer encoder, uh, 12 layers um, and 512 dimensional vector and eight heads we do the encoding and linear projection, and we get a text representation. Similarly, for the image, we have VIT, and then linear projection, and image representation, and that's what we we use for the contrast and learning. Okay, so um, the clip details are that it's trained on 400 million images, text pair, as I talk about, uh, bed size of 32,000. 32 epochs and all this thing. And architecture, ResNet, and the VIT, and uh, uh, transform-based text encoder. So now once it's trained, so, so main idea is that we just want to train the image encoder and text encoder. And you are using for text and uh, image, uh, text and image pairs. And these are available on internet. Now, some of these are noisy, so there's a whole research area the how you clean it up and, you know, all kinds of things. So, but let's say we are able to train it. So now to test it, we can do linear probe, which means we'll take the, like, image encoder and train a linear classifier on the top of it, where we will, features will be from image encoder, but then we'll have classifier, okay? So other is uh, zero shot class prediction that we just, as I explained to you, that we'll take the, during testing, we'll take the class label, we'll make a sentence, a photo of this, encode that, and we'll just do the uh, cosine similarity, whichever give you highest, we'll take that, okay? So the linear probe, so they did this experiment on this 12 different data set and um, they got um, pretty good results. Um, so these are different number of classes here. And they actually extended this to 27 data sets, more data set like that. And uh, they get uh, uh, good results, which are shown here. So as you see, the VIT uh, does the best. And uh, <clears throat> then these are the other different methods, efficient net and so on. Um, and the, <clears throat> so <clears throat> the ResNet doesn't do that good in this case um, compared to VIT. ResNet is the CNN 
methods and <laughs> VIT outperforms. So this is an extended data set. And here, uh, both the ResNet and VIT outperform other methods. And of course, the VIT performs better and all these different methods compared to that. Um, so that's that. Now let's look at zero shot. So as I explained this, this is a way to do the zero shot that we take class, make a sentence and just do class, you know, similarity, whichever give you maximum, but this is a picture. So on this one, they get a big improvement um, on this, all these data sets, this many improvement. Now, uh, <clears throat> the uh, this is comparing with the ResNet 50 uh, linear probe. So, um, the clip outperform on wide variety of popular data set. Uh, for video, they actually also typed uh, UCF 101, the video. And there they will just take the frames, uh, take a frame, do the image embedding and use that. Um, so that's that. And, uh, but they did have some data set where it did not perform well. These are the actually, uh, Zero shot did not perform well the clip based because they are very different. Uh, because as you are saying, that if the text and image pair are, you know, you are trained on that and similar kind of image and so on, then the then the clip will perform well, but it's very completely different than clip doesn't perform well. And because these are the images of satellite images, the biomedical images, uh, x-rays, and so on. We have Typical, you know, image pair they use what these are RGB images and so on. So that's a difference. Okay. So um, that's that, and um, then also other very good thing is that they showed that um, clip does pretty well on if you have the distribution. Uh, change, which means that, well, let's look at the banana class, okay? So this is the performance of the clip compared to with ImageNet, ResNet, and they're pretty similar. But now if you change, look at the ImageNet V2, which is a different data set, again, the same classes, but we are looking at the banana, then there's a huge, you know, big difference, about 6%. But even if you look at ImageNet rendition, again, the banana class, but these are render images, there's a big difference here, right? 37 to 89. And um, object net, again, big difference. So if there's a distribution shift, the clip does pretty well compared to the uh, standard trace net. Okay, so these are the actually sketches. Still, it's pretty well from 25 to 60%. Uh, and same thing is uh, adverse ImageNet. So now you can do zero shot where you don't have any, you're not using any, but other you can do low shot, which means you have few shots like the two shots or four shots, four example for each class and fine tune. Um, that is called low shot or few shot learning. So in that also, um, these uh, <clears throat> will do well compared to other method, the res, Simclair, ResNet, and so on. Um, so that's that. Um, and um, so now, as you see, we compare here with Simclair. Simclair is self-supervised learning method. Okay, so that look at the, again, contrasted, but take an image and apply some augmentation, like rotate an image, image and rotate version, they should be similar as compared to image of a dog, compared to image of the elephant should be different. So that's called sets by learning method, and this is same clear. So here we take an image of a dog, and these are different augmentation of the image 
and we want to make them similar. Now, this is an image of a chair and this different augmentation of the chair. One is a black and white, other is rotated or something, which should be similar. But the image of a dog should be very different. The representation of dog should be different from the chair. So this should attract, this should repair. So the similar idea as a clip. There we were doing image and text. Here we're doing image and it's rotated version or the black and white version, augmented version. So same idea. And here also we don't need labels. So it's a self-supervised learning method. Another self-supervised learning method is called mask autoencoder. So what we do, we take an image, get these pages, and we mask some of these pages randomly and uh, put these pages, unmasked pages in coder, and then we put these blank pages here for the decoder. We try to reconstruct all these mask images and we get this one. So that is another way to learn representation in a satisfied manner. And this masking is similar as we talk about in the BERT, BERT model, where we are masking the words. We mask the words and we predict the words. So these are two dominating self avoid methods, the mask autoencoder and the um, SimClear. So that's what we were comparing. So now, um, as I say, the clip uh, paper was a revolution, started lots of work. And that's the thing about open AI. Whatever they do, they're very smart people, uh, but they do very good work. The chat GPT is the example. So this was clip, you know, image, text input, and do the contrast learning. That's a beginning. But now there are lots of version of clip. There's slip where you, in addition to this contrast learning, you can add the self supply learning. Suppose you can do these um, um, simpler. You take an image and you rotate it, and you want to be similar image in some other version, other image uh, of an airplane. You want to make it different. So you can train again the objective is to get a better image encoder and text encoder. But here now you haven't used two losses. One loss is contrastive, as you use here. Other loss is the, the self by loss, the um, either mask autoencoder or the simpler loss. Okay, it's called slip. And this is another one where we have the um, <clears throat> contrastive loss, but also the uh, masking, where we are going to mask here. Um, only image. And there's another one where we are going to mask both. We can master some of the text word and some of this. So this is another version. There are lots of these mask clips, flip, slip. So actually we are going to do this first paper we'll discuss will be this one. And uh, then we can also do where we have, we will take uh, image and say do object detection or you know segmentation and these will be called expert model. And we can do contrastive learning with that also. So we'll discuss all those things. But main point is the initial idea of clip is very intuitive, very simple, that you have an image, you have a caption, and uh, you want to learn the representation so that the image and the right caption, they are similar, they map to same, same space, they are similar image, and different caption, they should be different. And that is what is doing that you are using the natural language to guide the learning in images. Because computer vision mostly just look at the images, videos, and so on. There was no text, but we learn from the NLP because NLP, robotics, uh, computer vision, speech recognition, all these are branches of AI, but vision, they have been you know, working itself separately and they have been doing very good work, but NLP has been separately, but now this is kind of merging. 
So same way now you can combine with speech, speech recognition, another area where you recognize speech. Now what this multimodal, large multimodal model is doing, you can bring in all the modalities and basically use a similar phenomena, similar techniques, transformer, contrasted learning, next word prediction, mass language model, and all those things. So which is, I think, unification of all these methods. Okay, so I think that's what I have. Um, so 